Hi everybody, I'm Simon. Solomon's Tales number nine. Can't believe I thought it was only going to be one or two. Apologies again, aircraft noise. I'm looking into a mic system to see if I can work a way of drowning it out. So, recap go and watch the last video. <laughs> Solomon's sat at the breakfast table. Girl stood right in front of him, is the girl he's had some aerobics classes with for the last few days, well, yesterday. Girl's just left his room he had the night with. She's staring at him. She asks him what he wants for breakfast and he says, and he thinks, I might have got away with this. She turns around, off she goes. Comes back with the breakfast, puts it on the table, doesn't smile at him, sort of looks of daggers. Now his breakfast is included in the hotel price. So you can imagine the surprise on his face when she put a bin on the table. Little invoice, a bit chitty with something written on it in the little wooden bin and slams it down on the table and walks away. Oh, yeah, he's got to look at it, he's just nosy. And she's stood 20 metres away, her and her friend watching. And he picks the chitty out, the little invoice, and he looks at it. And it just says 3,000 baht. It doesn't say what for or anything. What's it for? Well, it's the three or four times in the last 24, 36 hours that he's had aerobics instruction with her. If he hadn't have took that girl back last night um, and take, took this one back, she probably wouldn't have asked him for any money because she was probably in for the fun, in it for the fun. He bought her a couple of meals. Anyway, now he's got a dilemma. So he puts it back in the bin and he eats his breakfast. If he doesn't pay her, because <coughs> he doesn't have to, it's not a hotel bill, she's going to lose face with in front of her friend. Plus, he might get lots of missiles thrown at him as he goes to check out. You know, he wants to get to Phuket. Or he pays it, she doesn't lose face, and he'll still probably get daggers the looks but maybe not missiles he's a fair guy you know um, this holiday is for what three weeks maybe four weeks of hedonistic fun well hedonistic in his terms not in everybody's some are way more hedonistic but he wants to get Thailand out of his system that's what this holiday is about so he eats his breakfast pocket pulls out 3,000 and actually puts an extra thousand, four thousand baht, puts it in the wooden tub, I put it up in the air and shakes it at her. He's finished his breakfast, she walks across, she grabs the tub out of his hand and looks in and she could spot that that was more than three thousand and she put her hand in and quick count in the bin, smiled at him, turned around and walked away. Wow. Okay. Whatever. It's only money. Up he gets. Back to his room. He thinks, right, I'm going to have a swim. Check out. Probably 10, 11 o'clock or whatever. Puts his shorts on. Jumps in the pool as a swim. Points across to the two girls. Beer. Gets a Heineken. His favourite beer. And the other girl brings it across. The tall, thin one with the long black hair. One that looks like a sort of Lao or Cambodia girl. She sort of grunts at him and gives him a bit and he drinks it in the pool. Um, out the pool, into his room, gets changed, packs everything up, comes out, pays for the beer, and just says goodbye. And they both grunt at him. But the little one did sort of smile, half, sort of half a smile. Out to the check in, check out. Um, nothing to pay because he's already no he did have to pay because he'd only booked one night so he had to clear the room anyway he paid now he's in a dilemma Huahim was amazing he planned on a quick stopover and work out how to get down to Phuket so his options taxi to Phuket expensive minibus down to Siratani and then change another minibus down to Krabi or over to Phuket or even Samui or it's back on the train 
He's already got a train ticket. He could probably get on the train. They won't even ask him for his ticket. So he thinks, I hated the train, but it is a direct straight down to Siratani. Maybe it's three, four, five hours or something. He thought, let's just go for it. The train station is only 300 meters away. So he walks up to the train station. Hopefully there's a train soon. On the board, has a quick look. He's in luck. There's a train in about 20 minutes and it's going, but he doesn't know the different types of train, whether there's a fast, slow or medium. He has no idea, he doesn't say. In comes a train. There's no other trains on the board, so it's gotta be that one. Just jumps on the train. Now he had a seat number on his ticket. So he went back to that seat again. Luckily there's no one in it. So he just sat in it. Staring out the window. Yeah, it's a 30 mile an hour train again. Three, four, I'm not sure how long, but a few hours later anyway. Cheesed off again, slow speed, but gets into Siratani. And it's sort of two in the afternoon. Now, the plan is to get to Phuket. He'd never been there before, heard good things about it. He knows it's a bit more expensive. But I do this holiday, it's not so much the beach and the sea, it's come for the getting Thailand out of his system. Siratani doesn't know anything about it. Doesn't want to go to Samui. He just, he's also heard of Krabi. Anyway, he looks around this uh, train station. The train just heads off further south, the wrong direction. Comes outside, inquires at a taxi rank, how much to Phuket, and it was again silly money. It's maybe three, four hour drive. Crabby, similar, expensive. Thinks, oh, what am I gonna do? Maybe there's minibuses. There's no way of getting across, it's taxi or minibus. And he thinks, well, maybe I'll go into Siratani. Maybe there's a minibus service in there or a bus service. So he wanders off, it's not far to the uh, center. So he just wanders off towards the center. Can't see buses or anything, it hasn't got a foggiest. It's just all foreign to him. It uh, doesn't seem many foreigners around there. They seem to just come and go through the stations. Spots a hotel in this little uh, square area. Let's go and check on prices. 700 baht for a night, and he thinks, Oof, why not? Let's have a night here. I can relax again, find some food tonight, and see if the hotel can help me with a transfer. So he goes in, checks in, basic room, throws his stuff in, down to the lobby, no pool or anything. And he's talking to the, it's a guy, a Thai guy, trying to get some sort of information. And the guy gives him loads of leaflets, and there's a, a mini bus, leaflet there with some times and he chats to the guy they sort of work it out in Thai and English there is a minibus service to either Krabi or Phuket and it's about 800 baht and it goes in the morning um, and one in the afternoon morning one's about 10 o'clock so it's right the guy says it's outside the hotel you buy the ticket from the hotel so he says I'll buy it later Food. You know, this is the middle of the afternoon. Walks across the square, sees a couple of little cafes and things, gets some Thai food. In he goes, Thai food, nice, nice food, very cheap. You know, it's like 120 baht for uh, chicken and rice. And he's sat there looking around, and it's it's quite a little, busy little center, and but not many foreigners. Notices a market off to his right. Could do with some more clothes. I thought, well, it's cheap food, maybe it's cheap clothes. He wanders in the market, buys a few shirts and a couple of pairs of shorts, and it is cheap. Um, but doesn't notice any, there's no bars anywhere, he can't see any. Things are strange, no bars. Yeah, he gets his clothes back to the hotel. Up to his room, dumps his stuff, goes back down to pay for the shuttle. And he gets talking to the guy about bars and girls, of course. <laughs> um, and then another girl appears who works behind the desk. And they're English, he's got a little bit of English. It's a bit embarrassing asking a girl where the girly bars are, but anyway, he does. And apparently, they're on the edge of town. Um, tuk tuk drivers will take you there, is the sort of message. Okay. 
Now you must decide, Krabby or Phuket. Phuket. Box the minibus, 10 o'clock next morning, 800 baht, pays, gets the ticket. Right, hotel room, sleep, a few hours. Yeah, he's fed up with that train, he tires him out. So here he is in Suratani. Never been before, it's all nice. Cut the mask kit, jumps up, shower, changes, puts his new shorts on and a t-shirt. So he's pretty scruffy. Comes down, there's a different guy on the reception. He says, tuk tuk. And the guy points him across the road, so over the road he goes. Up to this tuk tuk. Oh, it's a dream job for a tuk tuk driver, isn't it? Foreigner, doesn't know where he's going. Money, woohoo. What's Bar, girls. And the tuk tuk's like, oh, even better. <laughs> I'll get commission off this. And he's like, yeah, 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 oh, okay. Now these are different bars here. These aren't like the normal beer bars. These are what they call the KKK bars, or I call them. Um, where you go to a bar, some girls sat there, maybe a karaoke machine. They might be singing, they might just be talking. Pick a girl and you pay the bar for the girl and the bar fine, if there's a bar fine, for the whole aerobics lessons. You just pay the bar for everything. So he jumps in his tuk-tuk. Off they go, mile down the road, stop and the tuk tuk wait, I wait. So I'm like, well, why are you wait? Okay, I'll look. He goes in, there's one girl in this bar, and it's like, no. <laughs> Walks back out. That's why you wait. Next. And anyway, he, the tuk tuk driver is just three or four bars, and they're all small, and just one or two girls in. And he says, that, Solomon says to the tuk tuk driver, more girls. Bigger bar, and the driver's like, "Okay, he's had enough of me taking him round the lanes. Oh, I'll take him to a proper bar now." Oh, okay. And he whips around the corner, and there's a bar with about twenty girls in it, which is a lot for a little sort of town. Oh, oh great! How much? Two hundred baht or something. And Solomon's just like, "Yeah," just throws him the two hundred baht. He doesn't. It should only be about eighty baht, but whatever. Pays him. And the tuk-tuk driver said, I wait, I wait. And he's like, I'm not paying you. The tuk-tuk driver, okay, okay. <laughs> and then the tuk-tuk driver runs in before he does into the bar. Of course, he's going in there. Bar owner, I've brought you a customer. Give me some money. Probably gets 50 baht kickback. And then smiles at Solomon as he comes back out. He'd be paid. I wait, I wait. In goes Solomon. 20, oh, great. There is a little karaoke machine, there's a girl singing, squawking, ugh, doesn't sound good. Uh, seats, tables, no bar area as such, but a sort of desk thing. Any Heineken? Nah. Chang? Mm. Leo? Mm. He goes, give me Chang. And they go, one, two, three. What? Just one. And they sort of grunt, oh, what's that all about? And he sits down, off a girl runs out. They haven't got any beer in the bar. She's gone down to 7-Eleven to buy the Chang. She comes back, they pour it into a glass, they've still got half a bottle left. They've thrown ice in, he doesn't want ice. They've thrown ice in, boom. And a bin comes out, so they're gonna charge him twice as much as they just paid for it. Okay, gotta make some money. So he sat there with Chang, listening to a girl squawking in Thai that's Sounds terrible. All these girls just staring at him, and he's like, "Well, who's going to come and talk to me? There's no pool table. They don't. They're just still staring at him." He's like, oh "God, what's this all about?" He doesn't know he's got to pay for it all the girl and everything yet. Anyway, so he looks at all the girls. It's like in a, a sweet shop. Which sweet shall I take? And he thinks, "Well, that's a pretty girl. I like it. Oh, nice." And he sort of points at her. Over she comes. Oh, that worked. She sits down. Can't speak English. <laughs> Not a word. He's like, oh, God. yeah, well, whatever. And then she's drink, 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 like this. And he's like, hmm, okay, drink. And she mumbles something to another girl. Off, runs another girl like down 7 Eleven again. <laughs> comes back with a spy, little bottle of spy, into a glass, comes over with the bottle, gives her the bottle. 
So there's half a bottle in the glass and half the bottle gives her. Is there the half a bottle of Chang or whatever it is? Is still be on a desk, crafty buggers. <sighs> so there he is. Has the drink. Right, and he says to this girl, make some aerobic signs to her. And she's like, <laughs> how much? And she ain't gonna fuck you. He's like, no. And she's like, ah. So she waves at this old, old, old woman at the desk, who then comes across. She brings an invoice, a little bin, for his bottle of beer, in two invoices for two glasses. So that's about 100 baht, 120 baht. An invoice for her drink, which is a lady drink. And then she's waving um, another chitty, and he she passes it to him, passes it to him, and he picks it, and he says two thousand bar, and he's like, what, what, what? And she's like, girl, you, hotel, girl, come back, two thousand bar. And he's like, pay girl, you know, no, no, pay me. And then he's twigging her. He, he'd heard sort of rumours about this, but. Okay, so I pay the bar for everything, pay them with drinks, and done. So 2,300 bar or something. Yep. Pulls the money out, pays for the drinks, pays for the girl, pays the bar, everything's paid. The girl shoots off, she hasn't drunk her spy, shoots off, comes back with a jacket on. Anyway, he, he hasn't had this second beer, he's just, ah, oh, whatever, <sighs> drinks that glass. So they've got half a Chang over there of his. Spy of hers sat on the table. I'm sure when he walks out, if he looks over his shoulder, they'll all be drinking it and laughing. Grabs the girl out the front door. Oh, Tuk Tuk still there. That's a surprise. <laughs> it's like, uh, mm, hotel. And Tuk Tuk knows where he's coming from. He's already, he knows exactly where he's going. Yeah, yeah, hotel. Jumps in the Tuk Tuk with the girl. Off they go. Oh dear, 17 minutes already. We've had two minutes more today. And this is number nine. I've got to start filming the Jib season two series. So maybe I'll stop the Solomon's Tales here and continue it on after the next Jib series. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll get a microphone to sort these damn airplanes and helicopters out. I don't know guys, put some comments below. Shall I just keep going with Solomon so on? Make you wait for Jib 2? Let me know. Anyway, Solomon's having a great holiday. It's amazing. Remember he wants to get Thailand out of his system. This is his third trip to Thailand. He gave up an American trip to come to do this wanted lots of fun which he's having I will see you on whatever the next video will be hope you're enjoying it oh please subscribe thumbs up share see you soon bye